Hey guys. So, yeah, obviously one of the big things that happened in this episode is we get the reveal that Hao is not only an Asakura, but also Yo's brother, or at least during this cycle of reincarnation. And this is obviously something where, as the viewer, we already know from the first episode, but one thing I will say that, that, that I like about the reveal in the reboot here compared to the original anime is they cannot only feel for Yo's anger and, fr and frustration a lot more, at, at the idea that not only is how at not only the idea of how being reincarnated as his brother but in general how he like just yo dealing with the idea that he could be related to someone so evil <clears throat> but even more so I like how I let I also like how even though we get even though yo tries to hide it all by saying, Hide, hide, hide all his, hide all of that anger, frustration, all that by just kind of, just kind of brushing, finally like returning to himself on the beach and saying, and just smiling again. You can tell he basically still outright admi admits that he has no answer how to defeat How or or this or end this cycle of reincarnation. But like it's it's showing that the, like when it comes to How, like. How is the one time where Yo does not have an answer for anything? Like he, he he's literally that much of much of both an enigma and just an, an antithesis to everything Yo is that he, he cannot just find any answer of what to do about how. And I I kind of love how it's putting how it's really putting Yo in that moral moral quandary. I think I think he, I think it even I think I think there, there's even more, like, yo in this moral quandary than there was in the original anime, too, so, yeah. Um, but I also like how, with the further reveal that Hao has mastered all five points of destruction star, the literal ability to manipulate the literal laws of nature, yeah, that's that's kind of OP, that, uh, that Hao's guardian spirit can pretty much take on any form in relation to the star he wants it to, so we, we see more of how... The reveal of all this information at once is affecting Yo's friends and kind of like forcing them into a position of just kind of wondering what are we supposed to do now? Where where where, where do we go from here? And just in general, how to reconcile this new information? Because really, all they can do is in this moment is look to Yo like they just like Yo. They have no answers because <clears throat> and. Because, because, because bef before all this, I'm sure, I'm sure they kind of saw every one of them kind of saw the showman fights that is that would be fun and a competitive contest to test each other and push each other to ultimately see who would stand at the top of uh, stand at the top as the shaman king. But now, their their suddenly reality has hit them like a brick, and that this is this is more than just a just a tournament or a competition. Now it's a battle for survival and just. Like they're wondering how are they supposed to defeat a literal shaman god, and I'm not gonna lie, it did feel a little weird to to, to be going through the same flashback we already went through at the beginning of the first episode with the birth of Yo and Hal, but I do like how it also gave us a lot more context here compared to the original anime of why Hal decided in this in this era to return to his. Roots and as an Asakura, which is ultimately even the weakest of the clan, is born with, with a with a body being extremely rich in spirit energy, spirit energy, furioku, all that shit. So reincarnating as Yo's brother made made it easier for him to mask his aura. That's that, that's something I didn't really, and and even more so reincarnating as Yo's brother, like it made it easier for him to do so. Like that that's something I didn't really think all that hard about, but it does make sense. But even more than that. We finally get the answer to the cryptic, to the cryptic phrasing Hao's been using to refer to Yo, which is, Yo, <clears throat> Yo is literally Hao's other half, a vessel that houses the other, like houses, like the other half of Hao's, Hao's power. Meaning, the Hao we see now isn't even him at full strength. And honestly, I took this reveal for granted a lot when when watching the original anime because we're visiting it here makes the re revelation honestly even more terrifying for me than, than when I was watching Shaman King as Shaman, the original anime as a kid. And I love how just just how this backstory shows, how the backstory in itself shows just how much regret Yomei has been carrying around all these years from both his failure, but also kind of just 
living with the choice he made, even if ultimately still couldn't go through with it, and in the present feels feels some relief in trusting the next generation to handle the burden he's been carrying all his time. Like to him, he he sees Yo as Yo and the others as, but Yo especially, as the only one who can end th this this legacy of the Asakura. But as again, as so, it provides a nice contrast for the fact that Yo just doesn't have an answer right now either as to what to do. And yeah, I just I I really like this. Um, but yeah, I just, I just really like how how we do get a little bit more dive into Yome and all the other, and, and the secondary characters as well. Um, now, with that being said, one one of the now with all that being said, one of the things to talk about in this episode is that we get the masked man's we get the we get the we get the identity of the masked man who's been watching Yo and the others from afar this entire time, which is Mickey Hisa. Yo's father, and I'll be honest, even as someone who's read the manga, I'm still not sure how to feel about Mikihisa in the reboot. Because even though his overall involvement in the story is comparable to that of the original anime, there's an aspect to Mikihisa in in the manga and in this version of the anime that feels a little yes less de little less developed, or just in general doesn't feel like he makes as big of an impression as as he did. As he did before, and it like it's one of those things where I almost have to give the original anime credit for 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 for, for, for pretty much having having Mickey Hisa make a much bigger impression on on the story when when he's first introduced than, than how he's introduced here in the in the in the reboot in the manga. Like I didn't, I'm not. I, it's not that I don't hate Mickey Hisa either. It's just that he doesn't he doesn't leave as much of an impression on me, honestly. I don't like. I don't know how else to describe him. Then it it doesn't feel like he's as important as important or as he was before or as important as he should be. Like it's it's weird. I, I I can't I can't fully like describe it to you guys. It's just something just feels off about Mickey Hisa in this in this version. Um, <clears throat> of course, weirder than that though is is that yes to anyone asking anyone who wants confirmation on it. Then yes, believe it or not, guys, as you'll find out next episode, Keiko Asakura, Yo's mother, is actually still alive. Which, again, which shocked me at first when I first read the manga, because usually I've come up with come with this expectation that Japan loves to kill off mothers in fiction just as much as Disney does. So it's one of those things where it's refreshing to at least see the parents and like Yo's mother especially play a little bit more of a role in the story, however small. Like, like in again in the original anime, she, she was pretty much just there, and then she disappears. So it's like, at, at, for, for for whatever problems I have with Mikihisa, I can at least say I'm glad they're kind of addressing the mother, the, the mother thing in this. I'm glad they're at least addressing like the whole Yo's mother thing. Like, but that's that's one plot line that definitely kind of dropped off. So, but. <clears throat> But yeah, guys, that's per that's honestly pretty much all I've got for this re review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and as Crunchyroll. Be sure to hit the notification bell, subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Knight of Enemy, signing off. Later, everyone.